Hey everyone, welcome back. Today it's time to try some uh, investigatory troubleshooting on these SU carburetors. Inside the throat there you can see the air piston that is designed to move up and down as vacuum changes and uh, it keeps the, the car from flipping wide open throttle and dropping too lean right when you stomp the gas. The problem that I've got here um, is that this one moves relatively freely whereas on my rear carburetor here you can see it takes a decent more amount of force to get it to come up and uh, it's going to result in vastly different tunings for the front and rear sets of cylinders uh, when I stomp the throttle. Now the first step in our troubleshooting process is to see uh, if it has to do with the piston in the bore of the carburetor or if it has to do with the uh, dampening fluid in the dash pot. So in order to figure that out, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna loosen, we're gonna undo these dash pot caps so that they are no longer restricting it. If we go back to the front carburetor, it flies up and down nice and quickly. Go back to the rear carburetor, still flies up and down nice and quickly. What that means is that my issue does not have anything to do with the interference of this piston in the bore of the carburetor. It has to do with this piston on the bottom of the dash pot here and the fluid that it's sitting in. So the first thing we're gonna do then is we're gonna make sure that both carburetors have the exact same amount of fluid in the dash pots. Now, I've heard you can use 90 weight gear oil, I've heard you can use 2050, and I've heard you can use ATF. Take your pick, they're all different viscosities, they'll have slightly different results, but they should all work. Most important thing is that there is some resistance to that piston moving up and down in the bore. Let's get these dash pots off and take a look. got these on the bench I went ahead and drained all the fluid out of them as you can see I've been using ATF and there's honestly not much in there if you overfill it there is a little vent hole it'll squirt out the top but then you'll have oil or ATF all over the inside of your engine bay and it's gets all over the inside of your hood which is not necessarily great so um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up a little bit and then we will put um, some fluid in each of them and we will check resistance and see um, how we get on. Just started cleaning out the piston with the issue. All of that came out on the first spray. I guess maybe we should start with, is it clean? Now that I've got everything cleaned up, I think we're probably ready to reassemble. I'm going to go ahead and go uh, with 2050 the same uh, oil that you use in the engine to fill them back up again. The uh, debate rages as to what to use, but uh, the service manual says to use 2050. I think they say it's good down to like 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I live in Florida. I will never see 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, probably wouldn't be driving this car if it was. So, amount. I wish somebody could just give you a, hey, put in this many cc's or milliliters or whatever of oil and you're good to go but everybody describes it as a, a distance from certain things and not as an amount now i've read that the amount should be from the bottom of this 
and I've read that the amount should be a distance from the top of this. The top is probably a little bit easier to measure. So what we're going to do is if we want the level to be a quarter of an inch down from the top of the chamber, and I reckon that that's probably also about a quarter of an inch. So when that's inserted, it's going to raise about a quarter of an inch or so, maybe a little bit less. So I'm going to go down about half an inch from the top of this. I'll insert the piston. I'll double check my measurements. And that's what I'm going to go with for setting the dash pot oil level. Sit rep. Little British cars are weird. SU carburetors, weird. So I put everything back together, 2050 oil, topped it up exactly how it's supposed to be. And guess what? That piston was still stiff to move in the bore relative to this piston. Actually a little bit more so because 2050 oil is thicker than the ATF I was running. So as a troubleshooting step for the heck of it, I switched the dash pot caps. Figured, hey, let's see if there's a resistance difference between the two. And wouldn't you know it, That one slowed down, and that one sped up. Now they're actually pretty close to being even. So um, I guess I don't really have any useful information for you in this video because switching the dash pod caps fixed my issue, and I am 98% sure that they are not specific to front carb, rear carb. So. I can't imagine that that's uh, very helpful, but uh, maybe there's some useful information in here. <laughs> Have a great week, folks. Had to throw just a little bit of the test drive in here. This thing is running sweet. When I punch it, it doesn't just die. This thing is loving life. You know when it's running that sweet, I gotta put the icing on the cake.